It was beginning to feel like 2025 was the year of threats to amateur radio frequencies, uh, that of other services as well. But the FCC comes out with a banger, swinging for the end of the year. Amendment of commission rules regarding implementation of the final acts of the World Radio Communications Conference from 2015. Consider this kind of like the housekeeping, the things left to do to kind of clean up some of the agreements that were made on a world scale. Yes, countries do get together and they make agreements on how radio frequencies should be used as some of these use cases extend into products that will be available across into different countries or the use of frequencies like this one, allocate band of 5351.5 to 5366.5 kilohertz uh, to the amateur radio service, right? Those frequencies go well beyond a country. Now you might be thinking to yourself, 5351.5 kilohertz, what the heck is that? Well, that's a part of the 60 meter band, which, and for a few reasons, it's because this is a band that's not really used by a lot of ham radio operators. If you see above, you, you see the, the red and the green bars, that's a frequency allocation where you can just slide the VFO up and down, assuming you have privileges, extra, general, you get the idea. Even technician, right? Get a little CW on 80 meters. But with 60 meters, it's actually channelized. And, and we have these channels here that you can talk on, and it does limit power output. You can see right there, it describes some of it. It's uh, about 100 watt peak envelope power. That's what PEP means. So we're secondary users on that frequency set, not like this, where we're a primary user. The primary user is like the government here in the United States. So we have to kind of stay in these very tight band spaces. Now, this is a touch confusing, but we're going to work through it, and I'm going to give you the synopsis right up front. So 60 meters was traditionally made up of five channels, and radios would literally move through the channels that were already pre-configured for it. Or you just kind of had a tune right on the center spot of that, uh, of that channel. What they're going to do with the middle channel of the five is they're going to increase it to 5351.5 kilohertz to 5366.5 kilohertz. That allows us to actually slide the VFO around to be able to operate our radios in more of a frequency agile way. The limitations are that you have a basically 9.5 effective radiated power watts that you can use. Or, fifth, or another way to look at it is 15 watts equivalent isotropically radiated power. You still get the 100 watts of peak envelope power on the lower two channels and the upper two channels, but that middle portion, which is going to, again, be frequency agile, you'll be limited to about 10 watts. QRP, putting it more visually, these first two channels will remain exactly how they are. The middle one will take up this new kind of larger frequency space, and then the last two will be the standard 100 watt PEP channel. So first two, 100 watts, middle one, about 10 watts, and then the last two, 100 watt PEP power. And for those that are wondering why am I saying PEP power, peak envelope power? Well, the 100 watts is against a standard, in that case, a half wave dipole. So if you are somehow getting more characteristic gain in a certain direction, uh, then that would be above the 100 watts PEP power if you were putting 100 watts into the feed point. So you would need to bring down the power output of your radio to bring it within that 100 watt peak envelope power of a half wave dipole, right? So if I had some crazy five element gain on 60 meters, I know this is a little bit unreasonable, then I'd be getting a ton of power in this forward direction. I would need to duck that back so that it would be 100 watt peak envelope power out of that gain antenna. So just think generally, NFED half waves, dipoles, things like that are generally going to be about 100 watts output. But if you're a little concerned, then just dump it down a little bit because we are secondary users. And I don't necessarily want to piss off the government with my use of radio as a secondary user, meaning they can kick us off at any time. And you got to. The FCC vacate. opened up comments discussing this frequency allocation of 60 meters. And the ARRL came in there with a petition for rulemaking that came in 2017. And they recommended that the entirety of the band be open up to the amateur radio operators and that we keep our 100 watt PEP power output, which would be, you know, that would be the way I'd want it. But the NTIA, which uh, we are going to clarify what the heck NTIA is. The National Telecommunications and Information Administration added their own comments, adding to the footnote of WRC 15 final acts by allocating 
the band spread that we talked about, 5351 through 5366 kilohertz, to the amateur radio service on a secondary basis. And they recommend removing the existing channels, so the two up, we keep that middle band and then the two below, and then restricting the maximum power to 15 watts EIRP, or 9.1 15 watts ERP. FCC, doing us a solid, decided to keep the channels, so the two above, two below, and then keeping the 100-watt PEP power to go along with those channels, giving us the new frequency spaces and setting the power limits there. So they did give a little bit on both sides, but the uh, NTIA did at least get the power output restriction that they were looking for. Not sure why, but um, okay. Now, when it comes to keeping the channels or getting rid of the channels, the FCC cites that it was actually you commenters adding your thoughts on this that helped prevail and why we maintain them. Mentioning that 60 meters is a really nice band in between 80 and 40 meters that allow for propagation that is sometimes not possible with 80 meters and 40 meters. And that 60 meters has for a long time been reliable for emergency communications. And so that's why they said, you sold me. You get to keep the channels and enjoy some new frequencies. Gotta love that. Now, 60 meters is an interesting one because it's multi-use, meaning different services have access to it. In this case, military auxiliary radio systems, or MARS, or SHARES, which I don't even know about this one, shared resources, high-frequency radio programs are used during disasters. And yeah, they, they practice and they use the space as well. And then you have RACES, the Radio Amateur Civil Emergency Service, the Amateur Radio Emergency Service, or ARIES. So there's a number of groups, a lot of them amateur radio related. But commenters were advising on what they thought those channels should be used for, if HAM should continue to have access to them. Some people even went so far to say is that it should only ever be used during an emergency and the FCC also doing a solid and I think reiterating what the point is of the amateur radio service says however most commenters on this issue do not support restricting the bands to emergency use and some state that while emergency use of the band by qualified amateurs remains important non-emergency use gives amateurs an important frequency band for continued communications and the FCC says to that we find that restricting the existing allocation to disaster response would deprive the amateur community of an important means of communication especially in instances where isophoric propagation characteristics at alternative high frequency bands render them potentially unusable. So well said. Yeah, that's one of the cool things about this band is it's in between 80 and it's in between 40 and ionosphere conditions can change how well any one of those bands propagate and 60 might find itself in the best out of the three type of category and that's where ham should go for communication even if they're just practicing and having fun on their radio. And definitely a thing I give a nod to that the commission notes I think, uh, well said, you hams that commented this, but the use of channelization is kind of mm, not helpful to the amateur radio operators, primarily because we use all kinds of different emission types or different modes of operation. Think continuous wave, CW, Morse code, phone, or digital. And so having a way that we can move up and down the frequencies with a little bit more agility is very, very good for the types of modes of operation that we use. We don't want to be channelized in one space and not have much area that we can wiggle around. It's a lot better if we can just kind of have our, our borders and we can play within that space fairly. Now, before you get too excited, this is still limited. This new band is still limited to general class license holders or higher. So technicians, it's time to go ahead and get your upgrade if you want to experience this new frequency allocation that we've received. The FCC notes, and so does the ARRL, in echoing the sentiment that generally newer radio amateurs might not have the necessary skills to negotiate not just the channels, but the limited space where interference becomes an issue and the ability to move around that, as well as doing the appropriate calculations to make sure that you're at or well below the 100 watt PEP for those channels that we maintain and of course also just uh, the about 10 watts or less that you'll have to be to use the new frequency spaces now this isn't a massive document but a lot of it pertains to updating or affirming 
to header footer information or different kind of requests for changes. Again, housekeeping. There's a whole section on satellite issues, and you can see that of that frequency space, it's that's not amateur radio frequencies. A lot of this had, had nothing to do uh, with amateur radio. In fact, some of the services were removing federal license attachment as a primary user and giving it back to the different services that were now going to become primary users. So it's worth a read if you're interested in just kind of like how the FCC works and operates. But for amateur radio operators, the big thing is the 60 meter band allocation. All in all, this is fantastic news for all amateur radio operators. This was released December 9th, so add 30 days to that, and I believe that's when this goes into effect. I know it says adopted uh, September 23rd, so I don't know exactly how that works, if it's already in effect or not. I would play it safe and just use the 30-day mark. If you disagree and like to amend my comments, feel free to post below. I, I will make note of it and possibly pin your comment. All in all, this is great news. The 60-meter band is one that I seldom played in, largely because I didn't have much interest in channelized HF, but with new frequency allocations in this area, you better believe we're going to be taking a lot more look at that and I hope to see you out there as well. I am Josh, KI6NAZ. Thanks so much for watching. Leave your comments below, and I'll touch you again soon. 73.